Okay. Hey guys, welcome to Mission Impact Series. This is the last one in our series of how trends affect social impact businesses. This is a series on grant makers. So we talked about how it affects board members and how your board members effective or if are going to be effective at um, doing their job as board members, right? Um, they may not be coming to board meetings. They may have mental health issues, just, you know, how they collect money, just the whole gamut, right? So go watch that one. We talked about donors and contributors. We talked about the fact that gas, gas prices are through the roof. People are losing their houses, people are losing their jobs, and that affects how much money they have to donate or contribute to your social impact business. And then the last one we just talked about was volunteers and how you need to make some adjustments in your how you recruit volunteers, what your volunteers do, how you interact with them, how they interact with the community to make sure your volunteers are safe. They're not stressed out because nobody wants to volunteer and be stressed out, right? Mm -hmm. So that they can continue to volunteer for you because the time that they give you is equating to money that you don't have to spend, mm -hmm. all right? So now we're going to talk about grant makers and how grant makers look at trends, utilize trends to determine how and who they're going to give their money to, how, who, and how much, right? So if this is your first time catching us, my name is Tracy V. Allen. I am the owner of TBA Consulting Group, where I help change agents <clears throat> to design, build, and fund their social ventures so that they can live the lifestyle they desire while impacting their community. All right. I'm Ty Boone. I'm owner of Ty Boone Enterprises. I work mostly with nonprofit organizations, helping them to move from startup and struggle to sustainability and success. And y'all know what? Sometimes I'll be tired of grants. Like, <laughs> I told them sometimes I just be tired. Like, look, I'm tired, right? Right? Because everybody wants a grant. Everybody wants a grant. Yep. You know, all the way for you get a grant, you get a grant. That's not how this works. But anyway, um, trends hugely impact where grant money goes right um start mm -hmm. setting up most of the you, you'll see you know every year every administration has their thing for federal funding you know especially mm -hmm. whatever their platform is whatever they're saying they're gonna uh, they're gonna address that's where most of the money is going to go so you have to pay attention to that first right mm -hmm. then you have you know you have kind of pockets of societal issues like economy we see and we and we see that like right now where even though we know that gas is nine thousand five hundred and seventy nine cents a gallon uh, we <laughs> we see that more and more people because of that want to gain some type of financial independence right and want to mm -hmm. they, they want to become more financially literate and things and and, and, the, and that's kind of where the grant makers are also looking they're looking at you know, what do people need what are people most likely to desire during this time or, or whatever we're going through in society right now or whatever the world is facing right now what is the thing that the people are finding more um, important so you're talking about economy because everybody wants to be rich so we're going so we're going to teach people how to be rich or what how can we make people more um you know understanding the economy and, and their finances and everybody wants to own a home so you have all these agencies that, that will fund things to support that kind of thing so what is it that you know the country or the world is most concerned with everybody wants you know mm -hmm. clean water so mm -hmm. those kind of things, what are the, what are those things that we see that you have to pay attention to um, in order to just even be in the running for some of the funds, you know, stigma, mm -hmm. reduction. you have a whole lot of stuff going on with, um, you know, different populations of people who are, you know, diversity, equity, inclusion, justice, all that stuff, because that's mm -hmm. where we're, that's where we are. Mm -hmm. So you have to pay attention to that. Sometimes Tracy, we miss out on money because we're still in 1927. That's and we're true. Trying to get funding for you know a color TV, and we already got color TVs. <laughs> we already got, we already got color TVs. We got Roku. We got smart TVs now. We got all kinds of stuff. So let's move on. Let's see what's what's the next thing. Right. Okay. Um, but the one danger that I want to say in everything that you said, because everything you said is right on point, is that we don't want to use that everything that Ty said to have shiny object syndrome. Right. Because opinion? that is something okay. that happens quite often is that you're looking at the trends because there are people who look at the trends. Also, social justice has a lot of money behind it. Now, you ain't never done nothing, nothing, nothing <laughs> with social justice. And all of a sudden, you're on a social justice bandwagon. 
but you don't have any programs or services geared towards social justice. Your audience is not an audience for social justice, but because there's money over here, you feel like you need to attach yourself to it. So grant makers do um, do that a lot. Um, they look at that too when they see a lot of people jumping on something and they're getting a lot of bogus applications. They're like, okay, man, maybe this isn't it, <laughs> right? Um, so one of the things I see a lot of people talking about is the fact that they got a grant last year and their grant, it was for a year because a lot of those have been happening too. So grant makers are not, a lot of the smaller, especially the foundations, they're not doing two, three, four, and five year grants anymore. They're doing year to year grants because they want to reassess mm -hmm. what is going on. They don't want to have to commit to giving you money for two years and then you not doing what you're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. So a lot of grant makers are doing one year grants. And so a lot of people are so perplexed by the fact that their grants are not being renewed. And that's because they're doing an evaluation on your organization. They're looking at your social media platforms. They're looking at your websites. They're looking at your messaging. They're looking at those reports that you're sending in and going, okay, this person looked like a good candidate when we selected them for this grant, but they're really not upholding or doing enough to support this particular mission. So that is something that grant makers are, are looking at as well. And if you notice, especially for social impact businesses, there are a lot of grants out there. So a lot before you can find a lot of um, grants for businesses, they were so sparse. You could roll tumbleweed through mm -hmm. the street because they were so sparse. But now there are a lot more grants out there for social impact businesses or just businesses, regular for-profit businesses. But a lot of them are attached to incubators and accelerators mm -hmm. because they want to know that they can train you in some way to make sure that you are not just going to squander their money. That your money, the monies that they give you for your business are actually going to go to good use. And the threshold for entry into these grants are pretty low. Some of them are just $1,500, um, $2,500, $5,000. Most of them, the max is $25,000 because they're not trying to give you hundreds of thousands of dollars for you to do nothing with. For you to do nothing with, right? And, the, and, Tracy, and then, you know, COVID happened, right? COVID yeah. happened. And for some of these, some... Funding agencies were in the middle of funding cycles when COVID happened. So they were in the middle of multi-year funding cycles. And then there was COVID mm -hmm. that put a hold on stuff, that made stuff work out a little bit different. So now instead of foundations, for example, saying, hey, this is going to be a three-year, two-year thing, they're like, we're going to, this is 12 months. Because we don't know what my, we don't know if COVID is going to happen again or whatever. Right. Because we have to protect our money. Mm -hmm. Right? So we're going to exactly. It's gonna be a 12 month thing. And if you get to do whatever you said you're gonna do in 12 months, you get your work plan together, you show me how you're gonna evaluate this, and mm -hmm. you, you make something happen within 12 months, then I know we've done a job and we and we can get a, a, the benefit out of giving us you our money. Right. right. Mm -hmm. Um and, and we, you know, like we said before, before you you see a lot of multi-year grants from foundations, and there I remember. When COVID started, I was reviewing, I think, HRSA, a HRSA grant at the time. Mm -hmm. Right in the middle of review, we get a notice from HRSA saying, hey, we've changed our direct our direction for funding, so y'all can stop the review. Like, right oh, in the wow. middle of review. <laughs> right in the middle of review, we got all these people applying for mm -hmm. four or $5 million, right? Wow. And, funding. and then something like that happened. We didn't talk about disaster preparedness, and I know we were supposed to do something like that. Um, mm -hmm. right yeah. <laughs> but this is what the funders are doing. They are mm -hmm. preparing for disaster because now it's coming. Right. Rising right. gas prices is, is, is a disaster. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. can't, if outreach workers, if if, if gas is a million dollars a gallon and, and then I have to reimburse six to seven cents or whatever it is um, a gallon now, we're talking about expenses that we weren't looking at initially. Right. right. So mm -hmm. now we're looking at how we're going to put more funds into this and do that. So we need to cut some things in certain places that may very well be this grant that we were going to have over here for this, that we decided not to have anymore. We can just put this somewhere, do something else with this money. Right. 
Yeah. So that is how grant makers are using what's trending, what's happening, because they have to look at their own bottom line as well to mm -hmm. determine how much money that they can dispel into the community. So they're looking at what is trending, what people want help with. They're determining how much money they, they feel that they can get behind. And trust me, nobody gives anything for nothing. So when these grant makers give out money, it is to help to elevate their social standing, to show mm -hmm. that they're being, um, it's called corporate social responsibility, mm -hmm. right? So they're, they're making sure that their CSR um, is where it needs to be and that they're getting a return on investment. And that return on investment is that you're going to tell everybody you got the grant mm -hmm. from XYZ. And mm -hmm. if they have a product to sell, guess what? You're more than likely subconsciously going to support them, mm -hmm. right? So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a cycle, Right, yeah, they give about them. Give them. It's, it's about, more about, about them than it is about you, right? It's like okay, right. they support the community, so now the community supports them. So oh, because they like grassroots right. organizations, so yeah, they're right. they're bought in, and and it's it's a it's a trick, y'all. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> but that's what it is. So, you're, you're exactly right. It's about whatever their bottom line is, trying to get that out, and if they're connected with you, and this is why important reporting and things like that are important too, because they want to mm -hmm. see that you're doing what it is that you said you're going to do. They want right. to know what the impact is so they can kind of take credit for it, which is not bad. Exactly. Because they will. In their mm -hmm. yearly report, they're going to say, we helped XYZ amount of people, right? Mm -hmm. But that XYZ was directly helped by you. But it's the return on investment. You want the money, then you play the game. That's kind yeah. of it, right? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. all right, everyone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank well, you for joining us. Stuff. Right. This is the last part of the series, how the trends affect social impact businesses. So make sure you go watch the other four videos, um, board members, donors and contributors, volunteers, and then this one, grant makers. Leave comments below if you need to get in contact with Ty or myself. All of the information for both of us is in the comments section. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.